Hi everyone, I'm Jason with Gear Talk, and today I'm here to tell you about Ultralightment. It's less about what you carry in here than it is about what you carry in here. I've come under a lot of criticism over the years for a lot of my ultralight backpacking philosophies, some of the gear I've reviewed, etc. And recently, I've been thinking that it's not really the gear itself. I talk a lot about gear, but I think there's a lot more to ultralight backpacking than just this fire striker or this uh, titanium pot. There's something mental and something philosophical, possibly spiritual, going on too. And so, what I've done is I've put to pen and paper my ultralight backpacking philosophy. There are six principles that I've identified through collaboration with other people, through being an active member of the ultralight community, that I think really truly define what it means to be an ultralight backpacker. So today I wanted to share that with you and just kind of outline some of the principles I think and also address some of the criticism that I get uh, over and over. The first tenet of ultralightment is skill. What I mean by that is there's a perception out there among the non-believers of ultralightment that think carrying more gear automatically equates to more comfort and more safety. Absolutely not true. It's a misperception that was perpetuated by the advertising in the outdoor industry that makes you think that you have to fear the outdoors and the more gear you carry, the more protection you're going to have against all the potential dangers of the outdoors. It's a ridiculous claim. Anyone who buys it just doesn't get it. They're non-believers. So what I'm saying is that skill allows you to leave a lot of gear behind that the advertising industry is trying to fool you into thinking you need so that you <laughs> can lighten up your pack. It's very, quite, it's very simple. Um, <clears throat> a good example of this, when I was out on Mount Whitney, I saw guys with 65 pound packs that were sweating and dying on the way up. They got up to 10,000 feet and you, you'd think they were going to collapse at any minute. I had a 20 pound pack with water and food and I was, you know, just going right up the mountain, no problem. And I, I wasn't cold at night. Uh, I didn't starve to death or any of the predictions that some of my critics uh, sometimes theorize about. I was comfortable and I was safe because I chose the right gear. I knew what to do with it, and I had the skills in order to leave all the creature comforts behind. The second tenet of ultralightment is adaptability. And this means a few things. One is ultralight backpackers are very versatile people. They can adapt to any situation. If they lose a piece of gear, they can adapt to it. If the weather changes unexpectedly, they're able to adapt to it. They have a system going. It also means that they're early adopters of new technology, new products. They like to try things out and see how they work. And they're always constantly involved in the evolution of backpacking. So adaptability is a key feature of that. Without that, you can't be an ultralight backpacker. The third pillar is analysis. What I've noticed is that ultralight backpackers are very analytical. They never take anyone's word for anything. They like to cogitate and think about things. So. If you're the kind of person that gets a spork or a new stove and even though the, the posted weight is on the website that you bought it from or the catalog or whatever, you still take it and the first thing you do when you pull it out of the box is put it on your scale and compare that weight to the weight that they stayed on their site. That's a true ultralight backpacker. You never, 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 never accept anything without your own empirical evidence for it. So analysis and, and having a critical mind about things is a really important key, key aspect to becoming a true ultralighter. The fourth principle is creativity. What that means is ultralight backpackers have a penchant for trying to be creative and solve problems that don't exist in the mainstream. They're always trying to invent the next greatest stove or solve a problem about how a pot stand doesn't fit. Uh, with a particular pot. They're very inventive people, very creative, always looking for new opportunities and thinking outside the box. So maybe an ultralighter is walking through the department store uh, with their wife and looking at some makeup because the wife dragged you along and you see something that you can potentially turn into a piece of ultralight gear. 
that's something that really doesn't happen in the conventional world. I mean, most people just go to REI and uh, listen to whatever the guy in the pack session tells them to buy and just buys it. We don't do that. We're creative. We're innovative people. And we're always constantly looking for opportunities, even outside of you know, the normal uh, backpacking world, and, and how to bring that in and adapt it to, to backpacking. So um, having that creative edge is something that clearly defines someone as an ultralight backpacker, not just a conventional backpacker. The great thing about that, too, is that a lot of ideas that come out of ultralight backpacking actually influence the mainstream. So that's why you see all these big companies coming out with ultralight packs, even though they're not really ultralight. But the, the idea is that um, they're watching us because they know that we're innovative. So creativity is another key feature of a real, true ultralighter. The fifth principle of ultralightenment is collaboration. That's very simple. Ultralighters love to share ideas. They're on forums, they're on blogs, they're asking for feedback, they're giving suggestions on other people's designs and taking other people's suggestions into, their, uh, into account for their designs and retweaking things. So if you've got a stove that you're working on, you're probably going to go and post in the forum and see if anyone has any comments on it and then try to incorporate those into your design. The collaborative nature of an ultralight backpacker is a key to their success because you can't live in a box and you can't be isolated, be a hermit, and think that you're going to come out with the next greatest thing. So c collaboration is very important. Uh, if you're an ultralight backpacker, uh, you know, sharing ideas is just going to be a really, really important uh, step in your evolution to ultralightenment. The sixth principle on the road to ultralightenment is mindfulness. To me, this is probably the most important and the least understood. What I mean by this is, I get a lot of criticism about people who are so concerned about durability. That's their number one thing. And they don't want to go ultralight because they're afraid of damaging some of their equipment. Let me give you an example. I uh, recently had a comment from uh, a guy that saw my free ultralight backpacking gear video who painted this absolutely ridiculous scenario. It was, first you're going to step on your Heineken pot and crush it, and then you can't cook, and then you're going to melt your spork, uh, your Taco Bell spork, and then you're going to step on your Aquafina water bottle and crush that and break it. I mean, it was just, and then you're going to have to cancel your trip. It was a, a ridiculous scenario. Absolutely ridiculous. If you're that clumsy, you should not be backpacking. You shouldn't be out in the backcountry. And you definitely should not be allowed to play with anything flammable. So, part of this is careless people do not get ultralight backpacking. They want everything to be idiot-proof, they want everything to be bomb-proof, and if you're, that, if you're that way, then you shouldn't be in the backcountry. What I propose is that an ultralight backpacker is mindful of everything they do. So, whether it's where you put things on the ground so that you're not going to step on them, or not losing track of your tent stakes, or pitching your tent tight, or whatever. It's being mindful of every action you take and thinking about the ramifications of every action that you do out there and just basically being aware. It's not hard, but most people are just careless and so they're not going to get ultralight backpacking. Sure, my water bottle isn't bomb-proof. It probably won't sustain a 500-foot fall, but I'm mindful and I'm not going to let my water bottle sustain a 500-foot fall. So that's the principle behind mindfulness and if you can't get that, you just you can't be an ultralight backpacker. So go ahead and carry your 65 pound pack and suffer the whole way up the mountain. But, you know, it, to me, it's a very simple mental adjustment you have to make to be a little bit more mindful in order to enjoy yourself out there and not have to have this crushing burden of a cross, you know, over your, your back. There's a lot more I could say about this topic, and I'm sure there's going to be some comments and discussion around it. But the bottom line is this if you don't have these six principles, you just don't get ultralight backpacking. Go ahead and feel free to give me your criticism. I'm fine with that. Matter of fact, I love it. But don't ever think that ultralight backpacking is just about what you carry in here. It's, it's a mental state. It's a state of being. It's a lot more than just nickel and diming uh, the weight of gear and counting grams and things like that. So anyway, this has been very helpful for me to think about. I hope it's been helpful for you. And this is just a seed of an idea. I'd like to expand this idea a little bit more, but 
Um, so I encourage your comments and, and your thoughts. I'd love to see what you think about my six principles and maybe you want to add more to it and maybe you think I'm missing something or maybe you think I'm just dead wrong about ultralight backpacking. I don't know. But I think just from meeting other people, ultralight backpackers, that I've identified it pretty well. It's not honed by any means, but uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So please let me know what you think and go light and get out there.